Good morning, everybody. Oh, thank you, Nick. I'm glad Mr. Falks is here to, to encourage me. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Clymer. I'm the founder of Hodinkee, a popular uh, mechanical watch magazine online. Uh, you know, something that uh, is exciting to me as a lover of mechanical watches is, of course, you know, what Tag Heuer represents to all of us. They've been at the helm of mechanical watchmaking for, for over 150 years. And I think today we all know that we'll see what might be the, the future of Tag Heuer. But before we do that, I think it's important that we understand the history of Tag Heuer. So if we can, uh, can we play a, a little video for you? So as you can see, as you can see, Tag Heuer has really been around so many legends throughout its, its, uh, its great history. Steve McQueen, Arts and Santa, people like that. Another legend that we have here today in a different right is Mr. Jean-Claude Beaver. Mr. Beaver is a legendary leader in the Swiss watch industry. He's been at the helm of several different watch companies over the course of the last 40 years, and he is a friend of mine and a friend to all Swiss watchmaking. So Mr. Beaver? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'm a legend the day I'm gonna die, maybe. Now I'm nobody. <laughs> and as long as you know that you are nobody, you are safe. The day you start to believe you are somebody, then you are in trouble. So for the time being, I just do my best <laughs> and I try to give back as much as I can. Because when you give back, you make yourself rich. You saw the history of Tag Heuer, 155 years, 155 years. But at Tag Heuer we say no innovation, no future. It's not enough to have tradition because tradition connects you to tomorrow. But we need to be connected, uh, sorry, tradition connects you to yesterday. But we need to be connected to tomorrow. Only the dead are connected to yesterday. The people that are alive, they connect yesterday to tomorrow. That's life. And Tag Heuer is alive. And we want to be connected to tomorrow. How could we be get connected to tomorrow in our Watch Valley? In the Watch Valley, as the name says, we are producing watches. But we are producing watches, mechanical watches. We are producing sometimes even quartz watches. But we are, if I may say, producing traditional watches, classic watches, high quality watches, watches with emotion, watches with style, watches with prestige, watches that people love, watches that you can keep for eternity. But can we do in Watch Valley a connected watch that the young people want? Can we do in Watch Valley a watch that connects generations? No. So what did, what did we do? Shall we say, no, we cannot do it? Or shall we try to do it? We tried to do it. And we went to Silicon Valley. 
So today, if there's something to be said, one word, today is the marriage of Watch Valley and Silicon Valley. It's the marriage of America and Switzerland. That is the level we are of what we are doing today. It's not just Tag Heuer who brings a watch. No, it's a political, it's a commercial, it's an industrial marriage. The marriage of knowledge, the marriage of research and development. And that is my proud, after 41 years in this business, that I can do that. That I can be here and present this wedding. <gasps> Thanks God I didn't retire. <laughs> I would not be here if I would have retired. So this wedding, what does it mean? It means for Tag Heuer, it's a milestone in our, for our brand. But it's also a milestone for the Swiss watch industry. The Swiss watch industry has entered today thanks to Intel, thanks to Google, thanks to Tag Heuer, the Swiss watch industry is connected to the future. That this fact which you will have now alive will never be forgotten. There in every book in the year 2478, in the book it will be written, on the 9th of November 2015, the Swiss watch industry connected, thanks to Tag Heuer, Intel and Google, connected itself to the future. So that is the importance of the event of today. And that is why I am so excited. That is why I'm so proud to be here. And my proud is such that, and it would have already been enough, but my proud is also that we have our ambassador, Swiss ambassador, being here in the room. And he came specially to say hello and to encourage us because he knows better than anybody what we are doing today. So, Mr. Ambassador, if you may come and say a few words. <laughs> Mr. Andre Schaller, amb Swiss ambassador. Thank you very much, Mr. Bieber. I'm very proud uh, to see today a concrete example of this leadership in innovation which links our two great countries, Switzerland and the United States. If you look at Global Innovation Index, our two countries are top. And today, we witness the result of a partnership between finest companies from the two sides, Tag Heuer, Intel, and Google. Not only partnership, Mr. Beaver said it, a wedding. Let me stop now. I want to be punctual on time being Swiss. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a very good anticipation, Mr. Schaller, Mr. Ambassador, because I always talk too much. And, <laughs> and I'm the example of the disrupted uh, guy. <laughs> Don't ask me to follow a scene. Nevertheless, <laughs> we, I want to say still a few words, still. And to give you the biggest challenge was not only that we produced this watch that is now on sale at 12 o'clock in 20 shops in America. I'm talking now, the stores are still closed. At 12 o'clock, the store, the door will open and the watches will be there to be sold, which is incredible. We have simultaneously we can promote and sell. But more important, what we tried to do, and please don't uh, misinterpret us, we gave instruction to our team, which I want to thank Guy Semon, the big boss, general manager of Tag Heuer, and boss of R&D, 
very strong mathematician and pilot, military pilot, uh, with coming with the planes in the French army on the boat, boom, landing on the boat. Uh, we said to Guy, Guy, do a connected watch, yes, but please, it must never look like a connected watch. <laughs> that is the challenge. Don't make it look like a connected watch because if it looks like a connected watch, it is a connected watch. So we said, make it look like a watch. Make give to this watch 155 years of beauty, of style, of elegancy, of prestige, of exclusivity. Make it in the best possible material, titanium, grade two. Make it super light, because today a watch must be comfortable. And Guy and his team achieved to present the first connected watch that looks like a watch. And in that sense, we have a huge difference with all the others. It, I have been wearing the watch for three weeks. Never anybody has said to me, oh, you have the connected watch. Because it doesn't look like a connected watch. And that is, for me, probably the best result we could have get. There are features in this connected watch. We will tell you what the connected watch can do. Eventually, what the connected watch cannot do. But before that, and we, we must not forget, and we will never forget, that without our two partners, I would not be here. Without our two partners, there would be no Tag Heuer. Without our two partners, we would not talk about connected watch. We would st still say, like many Swiss watch uh, brands, that's not interesting. But thanks to our partners, we are here. And they must be thanked for what they have done. And the first partner who is going to come on stage is Brian Kratznik from Intel. And Brian, it's such a honor that you came here to talk a little bit and to explain your, you. your point of view. Thank you. So um, uh, it's, it's a huge thrill for me to be here today and talk about this watch and uh, be a part of the launch. Uh, to us, this is, everything around us is, is becoming connected. And we see the world more and more a world of data that's being transferred and, and shared between people and places and things. And, and we want to this all to come to this watch face. Uh, now, like Jean-Claude, I've been uh, wearing this watch for over a month and it's been a fantastic experience. And the new Tag Heuer watch really allows me to have a connected experience. Uh, and I've worn it running, I've worn it swimming, I've worn it showering every morning. It's, it's been a fantastic product. And along with Google, a great partnership here has allowed us to work with, between the three companies, to bring a new chapter, we believe, to wearable devices. This is really, as uh, Jean-Claude said, a marriage between Silicon Valley and really the Swiss craftsmanship. And to me, that's what's really different about this watch, is that it really has both elements. And that's something that as I've shown it around to people, they all say as well, it doesn't look like an electronic device. It looks like something I would want to wear. Uh, and that's something that's very different. Android Wear through Google makes it very, very simple to use, to operate, to connect, uh, and to um, uh, uh, get your data and the information that you want real time. I really want to thank, uh, as I'm up here, uh, the partnership between uh, Google, uh, Tag Heuer, and as Jean-Claude said, especially uh, Guy Simon, who has been a fantastic, his whole team of engineers uh, has been just a fantastic team to work with and really allowed us to, to bring this to market in a very, very fast way. This was roughly about a year from the conception of this device to when we actually were able to bring this to market. Um, like uh, the ambassador, I want to be prompt and fairly quick this morning. Uh, so I want to just end today with, again, uh, I think you'll really enjoy this device. I think you'll really be surprised at the innovation and quality of the product. Uh, and I think you'll really uh, see that it's something that's different and uh, going to change the way people think about this marketplace. 
Uh, so I think uh, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. So before we bring out our, our next speaker, I want to present a, a very short video that will actually introduce you to the watch itself. So if we could. So there we have it. And if we could unveil them. All right. So over here, we have a few live examples of the very first Tag Heuer connected watches. I would kindly ask that you guys just wait in your seat for a little while longer. Uh, you will have the opportunity to play with them after the presentation. Um, you know, Jean-Claude mentioned two great partners uh, of Tag Heuer in this development. Um, Brian has already mentioned uh, what Intel has meant uh, to work with Google. And now I'd like to bring Mr. David Singleton up on stage from Google. Thanks, Ben. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here on behalf of Google and the Android Wear team. And thank you also to Brian and Jean-Claude. It's been a real pleasure working with your teams to bring the Tag Heuer connected to life. When you think about it, the watch has always been this incredible marriage of beauty and technology. It was craftsmanship and design, coupled with breakthroughs in mechanical engineering that came together all to answer one important question. What time is it? So from the very beginning, you had this amazing blend of fashion and function, something that was equal parts sexy and smart. Generations later, the watch remains the standard. The watch remains the standard for how you can take emotion on the one hand and fuse it with innovation on the other. So against that backdrop, the Tag Heuer Connected is a really big deal for us. Tagoyer, Intel, and Google have come together to start a new kind of evolution toward a better, smarter watch. And we're doing that through partnership. Now, if I had to choose just one thing that we've learned from the experience in building Android, it's that all of us working together is better than what any single one of us can achieve on our own. And that's why we've spent the past 10 years growing an ecosystem of Android partners and why we're so excited to be here today together with Tagoyer and Intel. With our combined expertise in luxury watchmaking, hardware, and software, we've created a product that people will absolutely love because of the way it looks, feels, and performs, and because it can actually improve the quality of people's lives, just like the very first watch. Let me explain. There is a reason why we wear watches on our wrists. It's the ideal place to wear the device comfortably and it remains visible at a glance all day long. Checking the time by glancing at your wrist is something that many of us take for granted, but it's actually at the core of why we love our watches, and it's key to how Android Wear can improve the experience even further. The question is why, and the answer can be summarized in three words, glanceable, actionable, and effortless. Think of all the decisions that you make on a daily basis based on the time. Is it time to eat, time to sleep, time to pick up the kids from school? And now think about all the other kinds of information that you might want at a glance, the next direction when you're walking around a new city, or the message from your wife to let you know that she's running late, the gate number for your flight as you arrive at the airport, or a thousand other things that could make your life more easy and more manageable. 
And you don't want to hunt around for that kind of information in your purse or your pocket or wherever it is that you left your phone. You want them to be glanceable, actionable, and effortless, just like checking the time on your watch. With Android Wear, we're using the best of Google's technologies to bring exactly this experience to the luxury watch. It's the power of Google search, just a glance away, the ability to ask a question out loud and get an answer immediately, and a global community of application developers that are working every single day to make your watch better. Google was founded, after all, on the idea that information should be accessible and organized and available when you need it. So with Android Wear, we're taking Google's rich history of software and information technology development and bringing it directly to your wrist. The result is a luxury watch that tells you more than just time at just the right time. Every day, my team in Silicon Valley is inspired by those original watches, those beautiful, useful devices that were created by some of the world's finest artists and engineers. But what excites me most is that with Ty Goyer and Intel, we're taking this vision and we're pushing the boundaries even further. Together, we've created a watch that you'll love for the way it looks and feels and for all the ways it helps you live your life. Together, we've built the Tiger Connected, the world's smartest luxury watch. Thanks. Thank you, David. Mr. Beaver, would you join us on stage? So I have a few questions uh, from myself as a journalist covering this field for a few years now. Mr. Beaver, um, why, why do you describe this product as a luxury product? It is exclusive. It has a great name, great brand. It is done with the greatest care. It has a very uh, precious metal, titanium grade too. And it's the best quality. Uh, don't forget, luxury must first be of quality. And number two, luxury means service. Um, <laughs> and luxury means innovation, and luxury starts with tradition. So luxury is tradition, luxury is innovation, luxury is quality, and luxury is service. That's my definition of luxury. And all this, you have in the watch. Plus, you have two great names, Intel, Google, and you have a Tag Heuer. That's the perfect match, and that is what I call a luxury watch. And once you have it on your wrist, once you wear the watch, you immediately get to understand what luxury means. Because luxury sometimes is invisible, but there, it's, luxury has a soul. And although these watches are somehow connected, they're also connected to the soul. And that is something that is very precious in luxury, to give birth to a watch with a soul. You know, we're gonna come back with a few questions, but I think we actually have a special guest uh, in the house, uh, Mr. Bernard Arnault, the CEO of all of LVMH. So Bernard, would you like to say a few words? Jean-Claude is much better than me, huh? Huh? and uh, I just want to thank all of you and uh, really congratulate Jean-Claude Biver for this uh, wonderful watch, which I tried seeing this morning and doing so far so well. So oh, yes. Well, yes. Um, and uh, I am delighted to see you all here in this uh, beautiful building, uh, which uh, was... Uh, really just a hint of what the group is going to, was going to do in the future year as, as far as architecture is concerned. And I, I think uh, the, the watch is a good illustration of uh, <coughs> what we do in uh, the group. Uh, because, you know, when this watch is an illustration as well as this building or the foundation that we, we did in Paris with uh, Frank Gehry 
of the most important value of the group, one being creativity, mm? um, architecture, uh, what Frank is doing, what Christian did here, and what Jean-Claude is doing with the watch is a very, very good illustration of creativity. Second value, which is illustrated today, is <coughs> quality. And the quality is key in everything we do. Uh, uh, quality of the products, uh, quality of the watch that Jean-Claude Biver has done for many years with us, starting with Hublot and now with uh, Tagoya and with the connected watch, and quality of also the building. Uh, uh, I like to say that uh, what Frank did in Paris uh, on the Bois de Boulogne, uh, his idea was to put a cloud uh, uh, landing in the Bois de Boulogne, but in the cloud you have a lot of steel. You have more steel in that cloud than in the Eiffel Tower, uh, which makes it a cloud which is not going to take off. But uh, the last uh, illustration of what we do together, and I think Jean-Claude is a good example, is uh, perseverance, is uh, even obstination mm -hmm. in what he does. Because he told me when he saw some uh, <coughs> competitors doing watches, look, uh, we are going to do a watch. We are not going to do a computer. Mm -hmm. And even if we have a computer inside, mm -hmm, uh, it's a real watch. And as Jean-Claude says very often, it's done for eternity. Mm -hmm. And I hope uh, it will be the case. And I'm sure he explained already what's no, going... No, not, no yet. not yet. <laughs> okay, so he will explain. Uh, he, he will explain the eternity in it and what's going on for the customers when uh, maybe the computer side um, needs uh, to go to the next generation which happen more and more often uh, these days. Thank you to all of us, and congratulations to Jean-Claude for what he did Merci. and what he is doing. And I, I, I already like very much the watch. Merci, Mr. Merci. 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 Thank you, Mr. Arnaud. So I think that that's as good of a segue as we could possibly ask for uh, into to what uh, he might have meant about uh, transitioning into something for eternity. Jean-Claude. Yes, we, as you know, we are obsessed with eternity. Uh, Big Ben in London is 150 years old and it still works. There are no mechanical products that are working after 150 years as the first day it worked. In Piazza San Marco, there is a bell with two ang uh, angels hitting on it every hour. It's from the 17th century and it works. This is what I call eternity in a box. That is what we are doing. We are giving birth to eternity in a box. Now, I was told, ah, Mr. Beaver, if you do a connected watch, then eternity will be gone. I said, no way, why? Because uh, technology becomes obsolete every two, three, five, seven years. I said, so what? Yes, but where's your eternity? And we said, no, if you have a connected watch from Tag Heuer and you feel you don't want to buy the next generation, but you don't want to throw it away, you go back to the store and we're gonna transform your connected watch into a mechanical watch, which will then become eternal. So we are still in the eternity. We are in the connected watch and we are in eternity. So now we are both, which is also why we should celebrate because it's the first time we are connected and eternal. And this is why we say sometimes here, connected to eternity. <laughs> That's, that is what we have done. And in that sense, we are first different unique. 
We are the only brand where you can buy a connected watch and transform it into a turner. And that is really an offer coming from a watch brand. Every, any computer brand cannot do that because they don't have the movements. So that is what Mr. Arno meant by the eternity. Thank you. So t to summarize, with the Tag Heuer connected smartwatch, after two years, after the contract is up, if you wouldn't like to upgrade to the next connected watch, you can trade your watch in, you have to hand it in, and for $1,500, you can then have a mechanical Carrera watch that will look just like it. So that is the gist of, of this eternity in a box uh, idea. Uh, back to a few more questions. Um, Brian, so could you describe a little bit of what it was like to work with a Swiss company coming from Intel? Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's actually been a really great experience. Uh, you know, I, I think we started not really knowing what we were getting into, but I, I think actually if you take a look at this partnership, each company has brought really what they do best. Um, and for us, working with Tag Heuer, it was all about learning how to do this with style, with the, the design, with the uh, rules and processes that TAG uses to really produce the quality product. You know, Mr. Beaver said earlier, you know, you know luxury when you put it on your wrist. You know how it feels. And I think uh, for us, that came across in this whole process as, as they showed us the design features or how it was to fit in and how the, they wanted the screen to look. And our engineers then went to work on how would we go build that with them, and then working with Google to build the software around that. Uh, it was a, a perfect marriage where each team brought what it did best in this case. Can I, can I ask a question to Brian? Mm, you bet. Uh, is it true to say that we have a computer inside our watch, that we have the smallest computer in the world inside the watch. Y you absolutely have a computer inside your watch? We have, a, we have a computer inside the watch, the smallest computer in the world. And if you take it out from the watch and you connect it to a keyboard and you connect to a screen, you can work. <laughs> yes, you could. True, huh? Yes, you could do that. Brilliant. I wouldn't suggest necessarily doing that, but <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely can. <laughs> so for the record, definitely not recommended. Okay. <laughs> uh, David, from, from your side and Google, could you describe what it was like working with, with TAG and what makes this different from all the other wearables that you've worked on? Absolutely. I'd echo a lot of what Brian said. This was a, a really fantastic partnership between all three companies. Um, we really have our teams have brought what they're uniquely good at, and we've kind of fused them together, as I was saying in my remarks, into something I think is bigger than the sum of its parts. So for me, one of the most inspirational uh, visits we had to the, to the TAG team was when we visited the, the lab where they build their prototypes um, in Switzerland, um, and saw just the, the thought and the precision and the passion that went into building these beautiful watches. And then we took that away and had lots of discussions and thought about how can we represent that passion in the user experience. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And, and John Claude, how is it different working with uh, American suppliers from the, from the Silicon Valley versus your Swiss suppliers? Very honestly, I didn't see a big difference. You know, uh, when people are good, they all work the same. <laughs> uh, you only see the difference when people are bad. <laughs> Good people have always something in common. They perform, <laughs> they are accurate, they know what they say, and they commit. And that is what we had with our two partners. And when we have good partners in Switzerland, or in, any other, or in Germany, we feel the same. Good people always behave the same. You know, Ben, I, I, one of the things, I, I, as we look around, um, you see this don't crack under pressure. And when I first saw that, when we started this partnership, I always thought, well, that's because a lot of these watches are diving watches, and there's an, an analogy there of, you know, don't crack under pressure of the, of the water. But what I learned is that it's also about their whole mantra of thinking as they go through a product in TOG around really 
how do you make sure that you challenge yourself, that you're pushing those limits, that you commit, as John claude said, and you make these schedules. And you know, it's been just a little over a year since the teams first even started talking about putting this product together. Uh, and now here it is launching. And uh, you know, as, as he said, at noon, you'll be able to go in and buy one of these. That is really this don't crack under pressure. It's really go get this done, sign up, commit. There's something about this culture that really drives that uh, mentality. It was very exciting to work with. Great. So later t today, we're going to open up the floors uh, to questions from, from you guys in the press. But first, I'd like to throw it to, to one final video. Yes, now comes something very special. When we travel from Switzerland, <laughs> normally we have to bring presents. You don't visit a country without bringing a present. And the present, the best present I could think about was my cheese. <laughs> and the cheese has a very strange, you can bring it because it, it's quite heavy, these poor guys. Thank you very much. Excellent. I will cut it later. So the cheese has a very uh, symbolic reason to exist here at, with Tag Heuer. And what's the reason? The reason is that the watch making art is born in the farmhouses of Switzerland. The watchmaking art was imported from France. In 1561, there was not one watchmaker in Switzerland, but there were many in France. And the French watchmakers were Protestant. And they had to flee to come to Switzerland because they were chased by the Catholics. It was one of these religion wars. And so they came to Switzerland. And in Switzerland, they found no watchmakers. So they needed to make, to build, uh, to, to uh, teach watchmakers. And where did they go? These French watchmakers went to the farmhouses because they believed that these farmers, being very poor, living in the mountains, six months of snow, that these people would be so patient would bring so much time, so much accuracy to do very little work, very accurate. And so they went there and said to the farmers, can you do that during the winter time? We're gonna pay you a few pence for each wheel you polish. And you know, the result was the miracle, the miracle of Switzerland. These farmers did the work at perfection till Suddenly, one of the farmers said, but let's do that the whole year. And let's give to the brothers the cheese. So the brothers were making the cheese, and one of the brothers was doing watches the whole year. And this is how the watch industry has taken, uh, uh, was born in Switzerland, in the farmhouses, which means every watchmaker was a farmer before. And when I said to my wife, I want to buy a farm and make cheese. She said, why? I said, because my passion is watches. So what? Ah, so what? <laughs> if I want to go back to the origin of my passion, then I have to go back <laughs> to the farmer because that is where the watchmaking art is born. So the present we bring is normally uh, the bells from the cows uh, you know, every cow has his belt. And so I brought four. One for you, Brian. <laughs> One for you, David. <laughs> and uh, one for you, Ben. 
You have done it perfectly. And one for Mr. Arno. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bravo, Alte. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now I'm going to cut the cheese and then we're going to eat it. And it is the best cheese of Switzerland. <laughs> if you this, don't is, this is the Michelin guide who says it. <laughs> it has been made uh, last year in my farm at 1,750 meters. Yes. And you will see. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, we should have a service to do that. <laughs> because if not, we stay here for 20 minutes till I have cut for everybody. <laughs> Come on, yes. You have to do it, huh? I just show you how and then you go. <laughs> Not easy, huh? Wait, I try this one. Once we have it in half, it's okay. All right. Wait. You bring it more here? Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we don't have the right knives. <laughs> In America, they don't know this. This is the biggest knife we found. We should have brought the knife from Switzerland, but in the plane, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little problem in the... <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> now let's try to break it. <laughs> uh, oops. I help you. Voila. Right. Yes, we got it. Great. And now you guys behind, you do that, huh? <laughs> you cut like this. Okay, right. and then you take that away, and then we eat. Yeah. Right. So you're going to stay another 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so now that the ceremonial cheese has been cut, finally, uh, this concludes <laughs> our, our live webcast. So thank you guys all online for viewing. Uh, and now we're going to do a small Q&A with the audience here in New York.